is Messi! It is the cleanest of clean finishes from the best on the planet. It's time for the biggest sports stories. Liverpool, the champions of Europe, are top of the world. The biggest interviews. That uh, such a great spectacle is ruined by such, such thuggish behaviour. And all the analysis right here. He's the one player that has the arrogance to think that he can play in any stadium in the world and any pitch in the world, in front of any player in the world and take them on. Every weekday, it's my sport, it's your sport. It's CFM Sport. Let's join the team for the biggest show in the world of sport on ZFM Stereo. My station, your station. So back Thursday, it's a very good evening, Zimbabwe, and welcome to your favorite sports show, ZFM Sports. Today, we keep it short, sharp, and sweet, bringing you, of course, either an interview or a special, but all of it designed to engage and improve your knowledge out of the world of sport. And today, we have a special guest on the show. His name is Sebastian Summerfield. Uh, some of you might have heard about him because he's been doing the rounds uh, as the young player who's out in an academy in the United Kingdom who wants to play for Zimbabwe. So stay tuned, stay locked to ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, because you're going to be hearing directly from the horse's mouth. My name is Mike Madod and with me is the usual team, Barry Menandi, Christine Midzi, and our producer is Sean Tafirinika. Hi, my name is Rudu Nishamba, my tour is Super Striker. You're listening to ZFM Sports. Don't forget, we love to keep it interactive right here on ZFM Sport. Get in touch with us on Twitter at ZFM Sport. That's the handle you need to search for if you want to have a chat with us uh, for, uh, about anything out of the world of sport. Uh, you can also catch the show on YouTube. That's if you know someone who's going to miss the live edition. They can always listen in on, at their own time, at their own leisure on YouTube. Simply search for at ZFM Sport. Now, I did promise you a special guest. He is here. And his name is Sebastian Summerfield. He's out at Gateshead Academy, uh, out in the United Kingdom, a feeder academy into Newcastle United Football Club, one of the big teams playing in the English Premiership based in the northeast of England. And he's our guest on ZFM Sports. Sebastian, good to have you on the show. Yeah, yeah thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm glad yeah, I'm here. Apps. Absolutely. Well, you, your voice immediately would uh, strike the listener as being very young. Uh, how young are you, Sebastian? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I am pretty young. I guess I'm 18 years old. I was born here in Zim. So, yeah, 2002 I was born and I've lived here my whole life. So, since I was a little boy, grew up in Zim, went to school here and literally about a few months ago only moved to the UK. So, I'm, I, I like to call myself a Zimbo. Uh, nice one. And now, now, for a lot of people listening, especially from just a, a traditional sense, uh, here in Zimbabwe, we don't really get to see a lot of young white boys playing football. We don't get to see white kids. In fact, there are no white players uh, in the Castle Lager Premier Soccer League. So we associate the white kids uh, with rugby, with cricket, with uh, water polo, with hockey, with tennis. Uh, what's up with the football? Yeah, you know what? It's funny you asked that. Like, I was talking to my parents about it last night. It, when I think about it, whenever I've played at all the academies I've played here, I've never actually faced someone who is white, you know? And for me, it's a bit sad because I think that football, there shouldn't be race to it. There shouldn't be any, any like, racial or cultural thing behind it. For me, football is just a sport that anyone can play. If you love it, you have to play it, you know? There's, there shouldn't be, like, a race factor to it. I'm just not sure why I, I'm happy playing football and I'm, I hope I can break that, maybe that scaredness that white people might have. Because you know what, at the end of the day, football's for everyone, it's not for a specific race or anything. So for me, it's just, I just play it because I love it. It's something I want to do in my life. When so did you start? You... When did the bug bite? So I've always played football since I was young. Um, so I used to play with my brothers because I had two older brothers. I used to play with them all the time when I was younger with my dad as well in the garden. But I started playing academy football, I think, around four, four years old, four or five years old. And that was at Celebration Center. So I went to Celebration Center and I played there for a little bit. And then I just got into school football. School football, uh, the automatic question will be, uh, what schools did you go to in, in, in Zim? So 
Um, lower level, I guess you could say, I went to the French school, so that was just for a few years, but for my whole life I was at Harare International School. So HIS, and that's where I predominantly played most of my sports because I, I played football, basketball, and volleyball. And then towards my last two years of school, or last three years of school, I decided I have to choose a sport I want to play. And obviously, football is the one I wanted to do. And I just have to say a really big thank you to all the coaches here that have helped me so much, um, especially Alan Johnson who trained me at from at HIS, and also Coach Farai who trained me at Legends. And then my personal trainer, Madhu, who's um, FAA training here in Zim, he, they, all three of them just helped me and molded me to be ready for the UK. So Sebastian, talk us through what an average day in your life looks like. You're still studying, I'm sure, but you're also playing football. You're pursuing that. That's your dream. What does an average day look like for you? Yeah, so like an average day, it's it's quite simple, to be honest. The life of a footballer is very, very easy. Um, you wake up well. You wake up early, and you you do your normal your normal routine. So for me, it would be wake up around six, seven, go for a run, make my breakfast, and then go for my first football training. So that would be a team training. So usually a training would be ranging from one hour to two hours. So we'd go maybe let's say nine till ten, ten thirty. After that, you would have lunch, and then you you spend time with your team. So a lot of the time, it's very team orientated so you always do like social activities with your team and be around your team and your managers and then after that I would go to the gym so that's a very like normal thing most footballers would go to the gym after and then do individual training after that so individual as in working on like different areas or weaknesses and I'm really lucky because the staff at Gateshead are really really helpful and with whatever you need they'll always help you they're always offering to do extra training or anything so yeah mainly it's just football and sport the whole day and then I do um, sports management so I'm learning sports management at Gateshead College and I do um, a, one class a week so it's on a Thursday and I just do that class it's about two hours a week but talk us talk us through um, well, how you actually got into into Gateshead Academy because um, we've heard lots of stories about how hard it is to get into a UK particularly a UK yeah academy uh least of all a german academy and all sorts you're doing it and you're actually in an academy that's a feeder yeah. academy into newcastle uh united so tell us how that all came about um so yeah this is actually a, a quite a funny story because as i said towards my last three four years of school i really had to decide what i wanted to do because i saw all my friends they started doing oh i want to be I don't know, a lawyer or a doctor, and I felt kind of left out. So I was like, okay, I love football. Let me do something with football. So as you said, being Zimbabwean and being in Zim, it's very hard to get that exposure. We don't have many scouts or anything here. So I decided I had to compile a list of different clubs' emails. So I got about 3,000, 4,000 club emails. So that's ranging from Premier League to German League. That's incredible. Yeah, um, and then I sent my CV out. So I have a CV and I have some videos. I sent that out to about 3,000 clubs. And then, yeah, I, I, I got a lot of negative responses saying, oh, you're too small, or oh, maybe next year, try again. So it's really discouraging, but I got an answer from Gateshead and the coach is Matty Patterson, who you guys might know, he used to play for South Africa. And he also plays for, he used to play for Newcastle. So I was really lucky in the sense that I guess he just wanted to give me an opportunity. So I, he, messaged, he emailed me back and said, okay, why don't you come in for trials? And I went for a trial and then I was fortunate enough to do well and they decided to ask me to come back. So that, that decision to go ahead and chart your own path and compile all these email addresses, did you have any kind of support or pressure from your parents to do this? Or did you just decide out of, you know, sheer will that this is what you wanted to do and you went full steam ahead on your own? Um, I guess I can say I'm really fortunate in the sense that my parents are really supportive of what I want to do. So they've been um, with me like through the journey with like whatever I wanted to do. If I wanted to go play football or do whatever, they've always said, whatever makes you happy will back you. So it was on my own, but I had a lot of help from my parents. They were always there helping me. But essentially, I had to find all these emails, all these agents and all that on my own. And while doing that, I, I found a lot of fake agents or fake emails and people just want to take advantage of you. Because a lot of the time I would get an answer or reply saying, OK, we'll offer you trials here in France, but you have to pay 2000 euros and for the flight and for your accommodation. And then at the end of the day, I just thought, is it 
is it real? Is it worth it? Am I gonna just go end up in some random place in France? But yeah, it, it, you just it's just been a tough journey, but I'm really grateful that my parents have been there and also my girlfriend and everyone who's been around me, they've just helped me a lot, you know. So I'm just I really grateful. Go for a mention in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, 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 he threw in the girlfriend there. That, that, that's good on you, Sebastian. And of course, uh, just in case you're tuning in, we are speaking to Sebastian Summerfield. He's an academy player uh, out in the United Kingdom at Gateshead. Uh, and they are a feeder club for the Premier League side, Newcastle United. He's playing under uh, Matthew Patterson, uh, played in South Africa. And of course, he is the proprietor at that uh, particular academy. This is EFM Sport. Now, you, you, you talked about the support you receiving from your parents and I'm glad to say that they're involved and I, I, I know your dad quite a bit he's a big huge huge Liverpool fan I mean um, recently Ray Clements passed away the legendary uh, Liverpool goalkeeper and your dad sent some pics uh, with him uh, he's also a very good friend of Bruce Grobbler uh, and so he's a man that I'm sure has a, a, a vast knowledge of football uh, and I'm sure that's assisted you, of course, on your journey uh, that you are taking. Uh, what's a, what team do you support, uh, Sebastian? What, uh, what sort of like, team have, do you back? Um, when I was younger, I used to support all different teams, but I guess my dad's really influenced me and I'm, I support Liverpool. You're a Liverpool fan. How about Zimbabwean football? Have you taken an interest in the local game? Have you followed uh, any of the teams here? Uh, yeah, so when I was young, I always used to support Dynamos because obviously Dynamos was the biggest team in Zim. Everyone knew about Dynamos. Um, oh, man. But I, I also like... <laughs> <laughs> um, but I also um, I like Ngezi Platinum as well. I just like their structure and how they do it. So yeah, I, I do follow it, but not religiously. So I don't, I, I don't watch every single game and all of that. But I still, I do try to follow it. Is that so, something that you would consider uh, playing your football here locally? Uh, um, for any one of our premiership sides? You know, for me, I think at the end of my career, I'd always love to come back to Zim and always help the people of Zim. So yeah, I, I definitely see myself coming back here. If that's being playing for a Zim team or maybe managing a team like that, I'd be happy to do that. But yeah, definitely towards the end of my career, I'm always looking to come back home. <laughs> so at the end of your career, certainly uh, come through to Zim. But let's 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 go back to that to that uh, to your academy experience. And I know earlier you said that the life of a footballer is fairly easy. And I know I I, I pretty figured out uh, um, what you meant by that um, in terms of it being routine rather than it being uh, easy. Um, the 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 now it being that we hear so many stories about. Uh, bo boys and girls in academies and how it's so easy to be cut and so easy so difficult for you to make the step up into into the professional ranks um talk us through some of the 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 the, um, the challenges or the preparation that you're getting uh and if there's any talk of you actually making the step up to going uh to going pro um and how tough it is to be out there and how you're you're toughening yourself uh, to be able to withstand that yeah, I guess I used the wrong word easy because when I when I think about it again, it, it is very hard. You have to dedicate your life to football. You can't just say, OK, I want to be a football player. You have to actually make sure that everything you do is to do with football. That comes to diet, that comes to your nutrition, that comes to your working out. And like you said, it's very, very easy for a club to cut someone off. Um, when you think about it, I was even reading some stats. It's like maybe nine percent or something crazy like that of academy graduates only get it to the first team and when you think about it how many thousands of kids are in these top academies already to make that cut is just you really have to be the best of the best or you have to have the dedication and work ethic like i like to use a line for example that you just have to just keep going all the time um it is it is difficult because sometimes you when you get into a big academy you can't maintain that level you have to get better so you can't just make like go for a trial and do well and stay at that level you always have to be better you have to either get faster get stronger or you have to build something in you that separates you from everyone else so to make that jump it doesn't mean oh I've, i'm in europe now it's i'm in europe now now i have to work even harder i have to get even stronger even faster to make that cut so Sebastian, what would you say is the ultimate goal for you? The, the, the thing that you want to achieve and when you achieve that thing, you'll be able to say this, I'm at the top of my career. This is the, the biggest dream that I had. 
you know, obviously to play for Liverpool, that's like, that's something that I dream about at night. Like going to bed, I think, oh, imagine one day I could actually play at Anfield, play in front of everyone, all, like in front of my family. And then my end goal actually is to bring football back home to Zim and create a pathway for kids like me to go into Europe. Because I've been in these academies, I've been to these local academies and I see how hard some of these guys work. And I just think to myself, these guys will never get the opportunity that I have. So I want to try use it. If I ever do make it big, get a platform and I'll be able to create a path for everyone here in Zim, equal path. So everyone has the same um, chance of making it pro because at the end of the day, my goal is to become like the best footballer I can be and also bring football back to Zim and just put it on the map. And so does that mean that uh, one day we could see you wearing the gold of the Warriors? Yeah, you know what, <clears throat> that's something I've, when I was younger, I've always wanted to play for them, you know, under 20, under 17, whatever it is. I just hope that I can represent them because I just love the country so much. It's given me so much. I was brought up here and I've just fallen in love with it and I can't actually repay it enough. And by wearing that that badge on, on my shirt, I, it's just like, it's it's a dream. If, I, if that ever does happen, I'd definitely be able, I'll take it straight away. Have you had any contact with uh, anyone from Zifa, any of our national team coaches? Uh, Have you had any conversations there? Uh, yeah, there is a lot of talk about um, going into the under-20 camp. Uh, nothing has been confirmed yet, but if I do get that opportunity, 100% I'll take it. And I think there's a tournament anyway um, on the 3rd of December. So hopefully I'll, I can work hard enough and do well and I can get selected for that. Super. Well, uh, Sebastian, uh, would love to carry on chatting with you, but uh, time is always limited here uh, on ZFM Sport. And uh, we're so glad that uh, we spoke to you. And uh, I think the one thing that uh, has impressed me the most is uh, your end game. You know, the desire you have to create a similar pathway for our young academy players here in Zimbabwe and afford them opportunities that you have enjoyed and hopefully they can make a fist of it in terms of getting uh, exposure out in Europe. And I think that that's very big of you and uh, we hope, of course, that we'll see you uh, play a bigger role in Zimbabwe football, not just as a player, but also after uh, your playing game days are done as an administrator and even as an owner of a football club here in Zimbabwe or uh, the owner of an academy. And so it's been good having you on the show. All right. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Excellent. And of course, you're a good man. You're a Liverpool supporter. Your dad yeah. is a Liverpool supporter. So you will never walk alone. Now, we hope to have you back on the show sometime Definitely. soon. All right. Great. Thank you. Time ever the enemy here on ZFM Sport. We were just talking to Sebastian, who is a teenager, and it certainly smells like teen spirit. Here's Nirvana. It's from 1991. Throwback Thursday. May God richly bless you. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Manandi, out.